Hello and a very warm welcome. Uh, Francesca Siegel is joining us, an author who started out uh, quite late, I would imagine, as a writer. But the first novel is something that you've written from a male perspective, and I'm going to ask you about that. But I also understand that you divide your time between two cities, and that's London and New York. And, you know, that's always difficult when you have two homes. Um, well, it's difficult and it's a great privilege, really. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have two places that, that feel that, that you feel at home and part of. Yes, um, but I imagine New York is where your first novel was inspired. Uh, and well there is a certain vibe to that city. And a lot of people talk about it as well. I'm imagining that all that you take away from New York is something that you have been able to infuse into your first work. Well, my novel, uh, The Innocence, is, is actually a very London novel. It's, is it? Um, it's set in northwest London. And, and I wrote it whilst, um, whilst I was living in New York. But really, <laughs> northwest London is, is where I was from. It's, it's where I grew up, um, the Jewish community in, in London. And, and the novel really is a, is a portrait of that community. Um, and I think really uh, being in New York it was not so much essential. It was really the important point was being away from London, having a little bit of breathing space, a little bit of perspective, um, to write about a community that I'm extremely fond of and that I know from the inside out, but um, perhaps can be a little bit um, very loving and very supportive and also a little bit claustrophobic. You're so talking about the Jewish community that settled yes. in Hampstead? Yes, in, in Golders Green. In Golders Green. Um, so so there, is, there are certain nuances to them. Um, can you tell us about a few that you've been able to capture? Because obviously there must be people who've read the novel, who are coming up to you and telling you things about, yes, I know that. We live that. Well, I think, I think what's really been exciting about, about the publication of this book is it is a portrait of one specific world of the Jewish community in Golders Green in northwest London. Um, it's about you know, a young man coming of age, um, struggling to make a decision about you know, it's really a love triangle, a love story um, about how to be a good man, about who to marry, about how to differentiate between what he wants and what's been wanted for him his whole life. Right. And I have set this dilemma in a world that I know very well, but really one of the great joys of publication has been that people from worlds that are completely different, that I had no concept of, have come up to me and said, you know, this is my life. This is, I recognize this. This you know, the, the urge to, to please one's parents, the urge to do the right thing, the urge to, to be the good son, to, to make everybody happy within the community. It's actually a universal pressure. And, and so it's a very specific portrait, but I really hope it has echoes for, um, for really, you know, anyone who understands family, anyone who... You know, I find it very interesting, uh, Francesca, that you chose to write from a man's perspective, something that we introduced you with, because that's unique. Uh, you made that choice uh, very consciously. What was the thought behind it? Um, it felt, I, I don't think it's unique, but I think um, it felt like the right way to tell this story. Um, and, and it was a real pleasure, actually, to, to inhabit a man's mind whilst I was writing this book was really a great, um, it was a treat. I felt like for the period in which I was writing this book, I was a little bit more assertive myself outside. I really enjoyed it. It was. Um, it just was the right way to tell the story. I wanted to explore. I think we read a lot, actually, um, about, certainly in British literature, there's been a lot of exploration of young women wanting to get married, um, that kind of pressure in the mid-20s to settle down to find a husband. And I was actually more interested in, in the pressures on young men, which are sometimes a little bit overlooked, those <laughs> pressures to be um, a patriarch at, at 24, to you know, to be the head of a family, to do, to, to be a good son, to be a good father. Um, and those were the ideas that I really wanted to. And you're thinking this is peculiar to the community or are you thinking that this has global resonance in many of the communities I that you might know already? I think people are people and I think it's a human impulse to want to make, a very human impulse and a, and a, a laudable one to want to make your family proud of you and to make your community proud of you. So I think it's pretty universal. Right. But, you know, when you base it in a certain community that is based in a certain geographical location in the world, uh, there are certain nuances, like I said, but obviously there are these many shades that m much color that you'd bring to the table as well. So does that make it easier because you're able to kind of take immediately 
from the ambient noises, colors, sounds, the landscape, and of course the people? I think it's just, you know, I really hope that what I've done is create, um, that the community is really another character in the novel, that the community is a character and London is, an, is a character. Um, because really, you know, my aim was, was to evoke this world, to create um, a loving, clear-eyed portrait um, of a community and to bring that to life, uh, both for people who might be familiar with it and for whom it might be sort of, um, you know, be a world that they recognize intimately, but also for people who have no, you know, who've never been to London, let alone within, you know, experienced the Jewish community and life within that world also. Yes. Um, so, so it was really, um, you know, it's a character of its own, really. That's true. But you've also infused a lot of food, I understand, into your novel, yes? Is there a, a, a latent foodie in you that has been able to kind of be able to bring that as an offering as well as part of your first book? I think, oh, well, I only really realized actually quite how much food was in my book <laughs> after it was published. <laughs> um, I didn't really, I, I hadn't noticed. And then it was once it was finished and, and publishers and, you know, kind of had my first readers, people were saying, you know, there's really a lot of food in this book. And I was a bit sheepish and I went back and realized actually there is. But, um, but actually, you know, I think, you know, I am a foodie, but also in Jewish culture is, Food is, is a vocabulary, it's another means of communication and is so vital um, to family gatherings, to the way that people express love for one another, mm -hmm. to the way that, um, that people gather and are brought together. It's, it's, I think without food, as a, without a portrait and a vivid portrait of the meals and the, the customs, um, you wouldn't get a sense of, you know, food is really vital to bringing alive a sense of that community. Yes, and obviously there must be uh, that much more color to be able to offer when you talk about relationships, yes? When you talk about relationships that are uh, conceived through things like food or when you, when you travel, when you meet different people, are you seeing the kind of, you know, the global thrust that we see in terms of relationships, in terms of, you know, the way people connect with each other, the commonality, the thread that you see? are things that you observe because you're a young writer and obviously you're looking at inspiration from different spaces. How do you look for them? How do you kind of get that idea going? An idea for, for, for a novel? For a book, for, for, for any kind of work, perhaps. Do you write columns as well? Because you have a journalistic career. Uh, I do. I do a, a lot of journalism. I'm not writing a column at the moment because um, I'm, I'm busy writing the second novel. But right. uh, I think... Uh, I think an idea for a, for a novel is really the idea that comes to you that you can't not tell. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, I wrote, for a long time, I wrote the debut fiction column. Uh, when I was writing a column, I wrote the debut fiction column for The Observer in the UK. Okay. Um, so I was really, for three years, immersed in other people's first novels. Um, and every month I would get this sack of, of debut fiction that I had to go through and, and read. And, um, and it really was very humbling because it taught me that the world does not need another novel, um, and it certainly doesn't need another first <laughs> novel. Um, and, and so it was very humbling, but it also, I think, taught me patience, um, because to, to tell a novel, to, to, to commandeer someone's attention for 90,000, 100,000 words, there really has to be something that you are burning to say. Um, so I think you know, it, it's like love, really. I think it has to be absolute passion. Um, it really has to capture you and be something that is just bursting out of you to be the right idea for a novel. And that's, that was what this was for me. It was, I just, it was the story I couldn't not tell. But as a young writer, obviously, um, you know, like you said, there's just so much out there to read, to consume. Media has so much to offer at this point in time. What inspired you to be able to say that, look, one more is not going to hurt? Is that the thought, or is it that, look, I have a story and I think people need to know about it? It was neither of those. It was exactly what I described. It was I, I couldn't stop myself. I had to. Um, I, I knew, I didn't even really think by the time I had this idea about publication or about whether anyone wanted it or about the commercial side, it was just an impulsion to write and to tell this story. And it was just, I had no idea when I was writing it that it would ever go beyond you know, my own desk. But, but I just had to, I had to try. Pleasantly surprised. It's been a great pleasure. <laughs> and we are going to expect more 
Tell us about the next one that you write. Oh, I can't do that. No? I couldn't possibly know. It's, uh, it's, still, <laughs> it's still germinating, so it's a little bit fragile. So That's right. I can't tell talk us, about tell it us yet. whether it's New York or London, because I know that you've torn between the two cities. It's actually half set in London and half set in Boston. Oh, fantastic. So. Excellent. We look forward to it. Thank you. Francesca, many thanks for joining us. Thank you.